On today's episode of Men of the Apes, we find out there's no crying over spilled beer. They greenlit the sequel without a story in mind. They just wanted to equal an unexpected gold mine. He said, oh no, as Heston said, I got to go. These are just some of the facts you ought to know as we go. Beneath the Men of the Apes. Beneath the Minute of the Apes. Beneath the Minute of the Apes. Hello and welcome to Minute of the Apes, the daily podcast where we break down every minute of the Planet of the Ape movies one minute at a time. I'm Todd. Richard and Sean, how are you guys today? Great. Doing all right. No one's spilling their beer right now? I'm holding my liquor. Hey. Hey. Richard, I'm I'm sorry. I'm my holder. (laughs) What? (laughs) <laughs> All right, well, well wow. Okay, thank you. Woo. Good uh, night, everybody. It's already Tuesday, and we're signing off right now. So, it is Tuesday. We are on to minute 22. Sean, do you want to kind of give us a rundown on what's going on? All right, we're going to start minute 22 with Zero saying, only for my principles, and end with Brent and Nova running towards the right. And let's take a listen to this lovely minute of Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Only for my principles. All right, for your principles and mine. Only please stand... I gotta get out. Yeah, I gotta get back up there. I don't know how or what with, but I'm not staying here. All right, as of minute 22, we have three living humans, four dead humans, one dead ape, a shrewdness, of, a shrewdness of apes, and a gaggle of humans. This minute two, you can really tell it's not Roddy McDowell. Yeah, it, 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 the funny thing is it's not just his voice. Where I complimented so many of the background actors on their hunt shoulders, he does not emulate the whole yeah, the, twitching the with his twitching, nose. Yeah. Yeah, that you did. That was really good for a podcast, well, well, wasn't well, it? Uh-huh. They're, they're also pairing this with the fact that Kim Hunter is just bringing all the looks. Like yeah. she is, she is side eyeing everything and whipping yeah. this way and that way, including the last. Girls got attitude. She did, does. And I did so, have zero is tired of this bullshit. So, but you, you pair that next to you know uh, this new what's his name the new actor. Oh, sorry, but you you pair this with him who's just kind of having to impersonate somebody else, and it really feels like. You could tell that you'd lost Roddy McDowell. Like you're, you're, yeah. They had to put the prompt, the the focus on her because she is the star from the last movie that's moving into they, this. They one. have the understudy in there, and you can kind of tell. And the the play the, is not going to be the exact thing. The thing understudy that you pay is a for. very good way. Yeah. It is that you've you've paid the big dollar to be in there in the audience. You have thought you're going to see the star. Tonight's role of of Cornelius will be played by, by exactly, uh, and you just yeah. hear the ah. Uh, Thanks, Dennis. Theory. I honestly didn't understand this line. Like the hey, previous line was David Watson. David Watson okay. is the actor. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you, David Watson. David Watson. I didn't understand actually the delivery of this line. Zero as your husband, I beg you to stand up. And she goes, only for my principles. I she, did not understand. I that did not. At all. I was like, I will well, stand up. You should but sit I will down only for your stand principles. up for my principles. Is what she said. And he's like, all right, for your principles then, and mine only stand. I didn't. So, I didn't quite how that 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 didn't make any sense to me. If if I, I thought immediately because I thought the same thing, Richard. If her line had been, but I have principles. And he then replied with the same line, for All your right, principles in this, do it. And that mine, but only stand. So but if we if, so if, if we phrase it like that, mm-hmm. then his say, and mine, it says that he, he agrees with her and wants yes. her to stand. But the, whole, the, the standing for her principles didn't make sense. I wonder, much like in the first movie where it seemed like they had had an argument and they've had an argument before and you can right. kind of feel that relationship. I wonder if this is like an argument that they've had before. Will you please just stand up? 
Only for my principles. Well, it could be, and you know, it does. You're right. That, you're right. That does sound like a couple having a fight. Mm-hmm. And frankly, probably two of the better drawn characters in in the entire series so far are Cornelius and Zira. Mm-hmm. They truly have a repartee that you can you can believe that they're people that know each other. It works. Yeah. Uh, I I you get that some with Zayas. They have a relationship with him. You believe that has existed before. But I totally buy that very thing. They've had this fight before. Yeah. Well, and it, it was very much not. Roddy McDowell, because uh, David Watson, when he's delivering the line, all right for your principles, then mine only stand. He's not doing the same movement with his mouth. Yeah, yeah. It's very clunky. Not over an amphi- he's enunciating. trying to move his jaw back and forth to to show that his lips are moving, and it just didn't really work. Well, and you, you – okay, so you have the director saying what he wants as far as the speed of delivery, but you had the feeling that even if that director had said, I want you to immediately say to her she's got to get up, Roddy McDowell would have taken the half a beat to scrunch his nose – Twitch his yeah. face and say it, and that's what we I I like already expected. Considering what he's going to say, yeah. right? Do you, do you think that they spent a little more time on her makeup than his? Because even when she's talking, her mouth moves a little better, or she was just kind of acclimated to using. I think she's I acclimated think that to that. Latter, yeah. She because she made it work, and he just did not make it work at all. I. It's the first time also that I think that she has a pretty bad moment of overacting. Where she does. It, it, yeah, I think her whole eye twitch and everything around <laughs> is like, oh, good lord bring it down a little bit i mean and i know that they have to overact to get past the makeup to bring life to it but i don't know you don't know, have to play the back row no so one of the things that was in the script related to all of these lines is that there's actually um police or guerrilla police guerrilla soldiers actually kind of making the chimp stand up and there's a moment where she finally stands right before a police enters the shot but that's definitely not in the film. No. no that would have yeah, been no. very interesting. Yeah, that, that there's some type of policing going on. That, that's why the chimps stand. And then when it's pointed out that she sit it down, she sit it down, sitting down. <laughs> when she stands, it's right before they actually kind of, you kind of see them and then like they're supposed to back away. So that, that would have been an interesting little thing, especially then you just simply put in a shot of a guard staying there and even cocking his gun or something. And, yeah. and Cornelius is like, stand up. Then we get <clears> the pressure of it. Right, it, we understand the pressure of it because we see that we see unnamed. But you see the leader. consequences that if they right. don't stand. The, right, now right we're now truly just, almost in a military state. Yeah. What? Well, so we 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 move to this moment where ten seconds in, we kind of flash back on Nova, who's watching the entire production going on, and she's just kind of like eyes wide watching. Which, everything. if you think about it, how far away are they? Because are they a hundred yards away? Are they? A hundred feet away, they're thirteen feet away. Because you know, I'm you know, for me, it looks like they're a good distance away. It does so have from that Taylor and Nova's view, it'd be like you know, nobody here because you were talking Nova. about. If we're looking across the street at the building over there, if I'm trying to follow a conversation that's going on over there, I would just see. I thought the same thing. I thought, how is he hearing any of What's this? What's actually we, happening? There? We saw them right up. We saw. Nova point to the city, and we saw that familiar kind of like the shot creek of it, yeah. shot of the city itself. Which and then we see the them side of get back on the horse and ride even closer just to get to this moment. It was right. it felt very disconnected. They could see so much of the city to be able to get back on horse and ride yeah. more to get closer to the arena. Um, but before we go into his dialogue, because he mentioned something that doesn't make any sense to me either. We flashed to Zira, or sorry, Nova, who kind of watching thing. And then I swear I caught it, and I just happened to freeze frame this 13 seconds in. Cornelius gives the heaviest <laughs> eye roll I've ever seen in my entire life. You, you can yeah. hear them rattling around can, his head. When you watch it on video, it's not that I've just magically paused it at this right. moment, but you can actually see him go, ugh. Like, he, he it's it's so... Woman. It's, it's bizarre. It's like a really bizarre, like, why did they capture that moment? Was it intentional... Was he just, you know, unsticking the monkey mask from his eyelids, <laughs> or was he really trying to just like be annoyed with Zira? It again? I, I have a feeling because the way that's kind of pace interacted, that I, I can't help but the dir- think the director was saying, "This is a husband wife type moment. This is you are sick yeah, of her shit. Sure. Yeah, you've had this conversation a thousand times, you know, and you it is like, why won't she listen to me? We've all had that fight with our spouse where it's simply." Why won't you hear what I'm saying to you? And I think that's what they're playing. It, but it was, it was, it is. I funny. mean, if it was, if it was directed, if he was told to do this, it was very intentional. It's very like his eyes go back in his head and then come back down. And right. we, we have to watch that moment like, wow. But what a thankless job for Mr. Watson. You, you're filling in for a guy that completely inhabited that. 
you don't know that they're going to make any more ape films, but you know this, you're not going to be the one that's remembered for that role. In fact, you, there's a good chance that a lot of people that come aren't even going to know that's you. You're, you're the... Well, uh, we, I mean, we don't know future minutes. We don't. He's only had a couple lines so far. But... You're, I, you're I, Crispin Glover's character in Back to the Future 2. Where it they is. Literally have to put you upside down so that people don't realize it's a different actor playing that and character. And once again, somebody's emulating your v- delivery, not just the tone, but the cadence of your voice. He's mm-hmm. trying to be Roddy McDowell. What, just what a thankless thing to give somebody. So 15 seconds in, we move back from this moment and we, we move it on Brent. And Brent is kind of watching this whole thing. And then he says, I got to get out. I got to get back up there. I don't know how or with what, but I'm not staying here. What is he talking I mean, about? Okay, sure. He's saying is I he need to get about, back to about, space. But is, is that, he's talking about space? Yes, um, yeah. That's what he's I'm assuming space. he's saying I need to get back to space because then I could get back to Earth somehow. But does he not see the level of technology that he's looking at? How does he assume that these people or these creatures are going to have a spaceship when they're living in you know, the equivalent of mud huts for, that are built up as houses. And I, all I kept thinking was, if this was The Simpsons and they did the musical of this one, uh-huh. that would be his musical moment. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> I gotta get back up there. I know. Yeah, that would be it. This, this is a song moment. It this, is. That would fit perfectly right there. It's the most ludicrous moment because what I kept thinking was, to that extent, your your ship is shit in uh-huh. the desert. Right. I don't care what you think you got to do. You're stuck here, buddy. Yeah, you ain't going nowhere. It, it's just a stu- – and it, yeah. once again, it's what I talked about before, that we had the moments of him doing the, oh, shit, delivery. Instead of giving me more information, you have him reacting, and it's just stupid. Yeah. You were talking about him actually having part of the script rewritten. Uh-huh. This was not in the script. That whole lining, really? I've got to get out. i got to get back up there. I don't know how or what with, but I'm not staying here. Like Richard and I are doing a whole musical episode. He He – Clearly, either ad libbed it or they gave it to him on right. the moment because it wasn't the part of the original script, and he was trying to add something more to this moment. But I really didn't. When he first said that, I'm like, "He's going to get over there. He's going to get up aside." And I guess when, now that I look at it, he's actually looking up into space. Yeah, he's not going to get up there. He's yeah. got to know at this point. He's watching a primitive like monkey civilization. So if you're in that situation, <clears throat> if you're an astronaut that you've come looking for the biggest asshole on the face of the earth on a rescue mission, <laughs> you've crash landed, you found a hottie. And you've that gone, has Taylor's dog tag. Yes, and you've gone to a city with a bunch of apes that, for some reason, you can hear them talking about invasion and war type. And wanting to kill humans. Right. And humans, and maybe have seen humans being herded into containers. So the first reaction is, I want to get back up there. Should it not be, okay, hang on, I'm on a planet. Planets are big. I got to get away from these people. I don't know what's on the other side of this planet. It might be a bunch of humans that they're talking about, and I could go live with them and be safe and be okay. There's no way he's getting back in space. Why is he not simply going, how do we get away from here? I mean, unless he thinks Taylor's found a solution. I mean, I would be Taylor's like... Taylor's never found a solution. <laughs> but but he realistically should be thinking, I don't know where Taylor's ship is. I don't know where he's at. Maybe he's discovered something. I'd, I'd be in search for Taylor. You would be in search for... And you know what? Or the That's humans, a good point. Yeah. If that's your story, he should be immediately going, we've got to get away from here. I've got to find Taylor. I've got to know what's going on. I've got to find him. I've got to figure out what's, what, what does he know that I don't know. I mean, of this, course, this random know. savage woman has his dog tags. He's, so clearly he's either dead or right. he gave them to her because he left for someplace else. And she has sparkling white teeth. But beyond that, she's a savage. And, mm-hmm. you know, I just not thought about this. He's really set on Taylor, but he doesn't give a shit about Stuart or Landon or Dodge. Oh, that's true. He just true. cares about Taylor. What? Why does he not care about the rest of the crew? He didn't ask about the crew. It's That's a really good point. Yeah, just, just talking about, about these right minutes. Now. There's nothing about this that makes him. He well, because maybe that's what he saw the dog tags. I mean, he's so going he for knows the Taylor's skip, alive. The skipper, but come on, it's like it's like he's acting on the assumption that he already knows what has occurred in the first film, that all the rest of them are gone, They're dead somehow. That's a Sean. That's yeah. That I may be the most astute observation you've made all along. Well, geez, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never, I'd never ever thought of that. And all right. the times I watch this film, but I mean, and maybe they address it late in later minutes. But as of now, it just seems like he's on a rescue mission for one, and there were four moment. people. And and should should he not go impassioned almost to Nova, going, "Where is Taylor? Yeah, You've got and, and shake her, and she gets scared. That leads her to what we will see in coming minutes. You you always want a motivation for a character, and that motivation may be to withdraw. That may, motivation may be to to whatever. She has no motivation for what she does in the story. And if he were to almost attack her, 
Now she has things. Now she has something. We're allowing the char- characters to interact with the moment instead of describe the moment. So we get to the point where he utters his line about going back up in space. Mm-hmm. And then he kind of turns from his shrubbery, his bush, his bushery. <laughs> his shrubbery. Get thee to a shrubbery. And he starts to walk away and he kind of, Nova starts to follow him and he kind of grabs her by the elbow because that's what men do. And they lead off and then we get kind of one final scene of the original. 